everybody, we're back. I'm done. Hold on, let me get up. Oh. oh, that's good. That's Dunkin' Donuts. Hello, everybody. My name's Donna, and I'm I'm the one you call, right? This is Hey Donna. This is my show. This is episode three. Can you believe it? <laughs> everybody laugh. Everybody clap. I like you're excited. Yeah. All right. Episode three of Hey Donna. I can't believe it. Still here. Still helping you with your queries, your problems, your concerns, the best advice on the entire internet. And today, I am joined with, I don't know who, who the hell they saddled me with this time, but uh, I'm joined by someone. Who am I joined by? Okay, I oh! get it. I oh get my it. God! I get it, I get it. It's I my niece! It. Cutie Your Cinderella niece. is here! Yeah, if anyone is not claiming someone, it is me claiming you, Donna. I'd like to make that very clear. Well, I'm, I'm your aunt, you know, we're blood. I, okay? That's why I'm here. I love you so much. That's why I'm here. Listen, I, I don't agree with everything you do either. I don't agree with everything you do either. Right? You date that Ludwig. He looks like vanilla ice right now. Ludwig. Well, whatever, you know. It's pronunciation. Potato, potato. Well, I don't even have an uncle, so. Okay. All right, that one cut deep, well. you little bitch. You know, the show was better without you. Can we just see it back? Uh, no, I'm so excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited. You've done so well for yourself. I, uh, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Applause. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta whip him into shape. Hey, what did that Ludwig do to his hair? Um. He looks like a, a baseball player from the Dominican Republic with that hairdo. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. I think it looks nice. It, it looks hot. I like it. Please, not this one. Oh, I mean, I mean, if, he, if he's interested, he's interested. He's not interested. He's very much so taken. Oh, I'll put the lewd back in the wig, you know no, what I mean? No, you don't need to do any of that. Oh, my God. It's so good to have you here. So Look at us. It's like old friends bantering. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to have you back. Mm-hmm. Anyway... Cutie, I don't know if you know what we do here, but we take calls uh-huh. from you, the audience, and we solve your problems. We give you live advice right here on the air. It's amazing. Yeah. That's right. And there's a number you call. Do we have the number? There's a number somewhere. I don't know if we... There it is! 833-HATE. You don't even have a 1-800? Listen up. Complete, uh, completely out of our control. Apparently, there was already a 1-800-HEY-DONNA. Where How that happens, I'll never know. What does that go to? There's some other bitch named Donna out there answering phone calls right now. And if I find her, I'm going to put her in the bottom of the Hudson Bay. All right, I'm sorry. I... We, we, make the, we make do with what we have. I didn't mean to bring it up. All right. 1-833, yes. Not 1-800. But we're going to have a website soon. That's not a- That's right. An amazing website with everything uh, the dial-up internet has to offer. There's going to be sprinkles and sprites and GIFs. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Donna. I learned what a GIF is. Do you know what a GIF is? <laughs> I do. I know what a GIF is. Yeah. I a, know a lot of things. It's actually, it's pronounced GIF. It's pronounced GIF? Yeah, you should say that. Oh, to yeah. It's going to have all kinds of GIFs. Perfect. We're going to have a dancing cat. That'll be great. We're going to have a little Christmas tree that kind of boogies. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's going to be great. It'll be awesome for you. So. Anyway, uh huh. we have an amazing guest this week. Uh huh. Other than you, you're an amazing guest. Well, but we have another amazing guest. He's not here yet, but we have the incredible, the amazing, the brilliant web creator, the Andy Kaufman of Twitch, Germa. How do you know Germa? How do I know? Listen, I'm I'm a big fan of his work. Yeah, well, what's something he's done? He uh, he's a big doll guy, I hear. Plays with dolls, right? Did you bring any dolls for him? No, but he did he did something with dolls, right? A big doll. He does love dolls. He had like the world's biggest dollhouse or he's something. In guys and dolls. He's the main character. Oh, he, he's in the he's in the show tunes. Yep. Oh, just like you. Yeah. Yeah, sing one. Oh, I have too many in my head, but uh. Guys and dolls. We're just a bunch of crazy guys and dolls. That's good. Save Should it for I German. sing for him? Yeah. You'd like it? I like All it. right, I'll sing for him. I'm excited. It's kind of hot, too. Well, you've got to relax. Well, I'm, I'm just pointing there. I mean, come on, I'm pointing out the obvious here. German's pissing right now. Oh. <laughs> That's good. I didn't. Oh, oh, sorry, I wasn't supposed to say that. Okay. The producer just told me that. Sorry. 
Anyway, what's been going on in your life? Not much. Hey, not... You did a girls trip, right? Uh huh. I went on a girls trip. Mm. I, I. Oh, that's interesting. It was. Everybody was there, huh? Every. You know, you wouldn't have liked it. It was there was it was a Christian girls trip. Oh. Yeah, lots of praying. Yeah, it was it? I'm sure uh, Minx was just praying when she jumped through that table, huh? She, she was overwhelmed she by was the Holy Spirit. Not to hurt herself, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh huh. I guess my invite just got lost in the mail. It was a little. Pray for it next year. Uh huh. I'll get right on that. Perfect. Yeah. You can, maybe you can show me how to get on my knees. Hey, wait a minute! We got a guest here. We got hey. the amazing drama. Everybody clap. Oh. Hello. Oh my God. It's how are you? Oh Hello. God. It's such a wonderful time to see you. Yes. Sit now, here. Yeah. You you may sit there. Okay. Sit here. Now, I hear you put on the biggest production of Guys and Dolls Twitch has ever seen. Well, you know, get close. It's the dollhouse. All right. Now, why, why? It was just a, a big dollhouse? So it was a multi-level dollhouse structure. We All right. We brought a bunch of people over. And we, we did, a, we did a, a big show, and it was a lot of fun. It was probably the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. Okay. Can you explain a little bit what that means, multi-level doll? So... Picture a house cut in half. All right, I'm picturing it. And you're walking around in it. Yeah. There's a bathroom. All right. Only one bathroom. She's used okay. to halfway houses. Oh. Okay. All right, listen. You take one little trip to Betty Ford, everybody acts like it's the end of the road. She understands, she understands. All right, keep going, sorry. So it's a, it was a, a big house cut in half. Yeah. And in that house, we put people. And, sure. and in those people, they had a, a, a lot of interactions and they had a lot of fun. So there was a bear. There was a bear How is attack. this different than any other house? Well, do you get attacked by a bear in regular houses? No. I, I mean, outside of Siberia, I guess. Uh, have clowns <laughs> ever attacked you in your house? No. Have they ever eaten your peanut butter with their bare Actually, hands? Actually, yes, one time. But that was I was I was working as a carny at the time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, it was makes a, sense. I was I spread pixie dust on the. Are these the real? World. Are these real flowers? No. Oh, fake. okay. Yeah, they look. All right, Jeremy. You know what we do here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We take calls, we help people. Okay, You're I can do that. You're a worldly guy, I hear. I'm I excited for what advice you have to offer these people. I feel like I've got a lot. Yeah. All right. Let's take our first call. Let's take a call. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> that was immediate. You Hello, summoned it. Oh, this is Donna. Can I help you? Hey, Donna. Uh, this is John from New York on 26th. And I'm having this issue that has like really confused and and concerned about what I have to do. All right, uh, it sounds like you're talking into a walkie-talkie a little bit here, John. But uh what's your issue? So yeah, I I fell in love with my best friend basically. Oh, uh, oh. we've been friends for years. Uh it started cuz we were co-workers and oh, we gosh. had uh common interests. Uh she knows I had a little bit of like a friend crush on her okay. she, she was aware of that but yeah we we have like all the same friends now and I've, her family and everything and i just don't really know what to do or if i should do anything because i don't want to mess up Ooh. the friendship wow so did you always have these feelings or did these feelings just sneak up on you like dr disrespect in a bathroom <sighs> yeah <laughs> pretty much yeah yeah when did they sneak up on you uh fairly recently honestly we okay so yeah. So what, what what was happening when you started experiencing feelings? They don't just come out. Something had to happen. Uh, honestly, we watched movies, and a lot of the stuff that was happening in the movies kind of was very similar to our friendship, and it made me just think about it way more. So you went to a movie, and it inspired you to make a move on your best friend. What movie was this? Yeah, what was the movie? That's very important. That's very important. <laughs> uh. Honestly, if Thor, Love, and Thunder? No, I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. Thor inspired you to make a move on your best friend of five years. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of movies that inspire things, like the movie Trainwreck in your life. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Do you have any advice for him, or are you just going to rag on me all day? I have good advice. All right, hit him. I am currently dating one of my coworkers. No yeah, we all know. Ludwig. Very six five, and chiseled and very handsome. Um, just throwing that out there, not to make you jealous. But did you say Ludwig is six five? Ludwig is six five. What if he stands on his wallet? 
Exactly. That's a, that's a pretty big wallet. <laughs> yeah, it's a big wallet. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I think at first we were, we were friends for a very, very long time. Right. And then one day he... Took you to Thor Love and Thunder. Took me to Thor Love and took Thunder. Took you to the Thor movie. And yeah. then made a move. I actually, that's a great question. I don't know how we went from friends to more than that. I don't know where my advice was going. Oh, wow, I'm so glad to have you back. You're welcome. You really slam dunked that one. You literally went through the life experience he needs, and I, you forgot it. I wanted to brag. Need an answer. All right. Jeremy, you Honestly, got any advice okay, you're okay, I, I do have some advice. Okay. Sure. So, this is how long you've been friends for, you said? Five years. Five years. Okay. So, you know each other very well. You, you, you yeah. know each other very well. Uh, I would honestly... I would, you know, you just kind of have to gauge it, right? You just, yeah. I, I, you, you bring it up very, you know, hey, uh, I just want to let you know that, like, we've been friends for a long time. Um, I, my, I, I just want to know maybe if I, have, I have potential feelings for you. If you have feelings for me, that's great. If not, then that's no big deal. Like, yeah. then we can still be friends. I just, I, I want to kind of gauge how you feel. Yeah. You know, that's good advice. Gauging it out. One thing I would say: don't mention that. It was a Marvel movie that inspired you to make Absolutely a movie. not. I don't know how she would take that. It's not the most romantic thing I've ever heard. Maybe she omit- loves Marvel. Yeah, she doesn't love it that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe omit that. So, you know, I, I think German makes a good point. You got to approach this honestly. You got to have a conversation. You've known her for five years. You know her intimately. You know, kind of how best to approach this situation. But obviously, the elephant in the room is that when you let out that you have a physical attraction to this person, that might make her feel uncomfortable in the future because, you know, there's no way to put those those worms back in the can, right? It's hard to talk about, hey, did you see Game of Thrones? When in her mind, she's like, I wonder if he's thinking about my boobs right now. You know what I mean? So Whoa. you got to you gotta approach it from an emotional standpoint. And you got you to gotta say to her, listen, I... I I can't help this, but I think I've developed some kind of feelings beyond our friendship. Would you be open to discuss that? If not, you know, I'm so sorry. I will take a step back. I don't want to jeopardize our friendship at all. But I think you have to approach that from a very honest place and you got to approach it slow. You know what I mean? And maybe if she reciprocates those feelings, you go right into She-Hulk and you just see where the next Marvel project takes this. You know what I mean? (laughs) Anything else? Judy, you do you remember your real life experience of how six five Ludwig swept you off your feet? He's just so handsome. Are you handsome by chance? I uh, I like to think I am. He's handsome. You'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. But but don't make it weird, right? You know what I mean? Like like don't make it weird. Don't make it weird. If yeah, and I think you know what that means, right? Like if if you want to oh, give yeah, yeah if you want to just let, let let them know, hey, yeah, I I think I might have some feelings. Uh, I just want to make see if it's reciprocated. And I don't want to be weird, right? I, just, I don't want to. Not trying to, be to weird. make this weird. Don't you want to make I, this weird. You know what I think will, will help? Let's workshop this. Mm-hmm. All oh, right. Do you want to write the text? Why don't we do a text? You want to do a text, right? No, 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 no. Oh. Here's what we're gonna do. Jerma, you've been friends with Cutie Cinderella for a long time. Uh-huh. Yeah. You've just seen the most recent Marvel movie. Okay. And you gotta tell her you got a burning desire to be with her. And see, go. Oh, that movie sucked. Okay. I hated every second of it. Uh, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming was way better. What do you think? I... Marvel, Marvel. Yeah, so I think there could have been more of the Joker in the last one. That's DC. This is just not going to work. DC This what? is not going to work. I just don't think it's going to work. Sorry, that's just not going to work out. It's DC. Doesn't, even know, Doesn't even know the I Marvel movies. Doesn't even know the Marvel movies. educate my niece on who's in what cinematic universe. Goodbye! That was tough to watch. We're not the Joker. Dis- he's Batman. Yeah, superheroes. Oh my god. I just, it, it, it'll don't worry. It'll take like a, like another six or seven billion dollars for them to do that movie. Yeah. You 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 date one of the world's most famous nerds, and you don't know what's Marvel and what's DC. <laughs> We're connected to the Wi-Fi. I don't know what you're saying, DC. All right. Okay. <laughs> Listen, we got plenty more amazing advice coming up. After the break, you put your butts right there. When we come back, we got even more calls with the amazing Germa and my niece, Cutie Cinderella, here for the first time. She's amazing. That was good advice. That was good advice.
everybody! You're watching Hey Da! 1833! Hey Donna, because we couldn't get 1 800. Yet there it is. We couldn't get 1 800. Some other bitch named Donna really wanted that number. We're gonna find her. We're gonna find her. Just anyway. Call it. What? You just call it. You'll find her if you just call it. Call 1 800 Donna? 1 800. No! You don't even know if it's Hey Donna. Listen! I'm doing my best. You're throwing things at me. <laughs> You're supposed to help me out here. I'm old. Old? You're not. How old? What do you mean old? Not a day over 30. No, it doesn't. You don't look a day over at least 30. 40. Oh, thank you. My age is unknown, even to me. All right, we're going to take another call. Let's bring it in. Oh, look at that. Don't Hello. Hi, my name is Laura. I'm 27, and I live near Chicago. Hello, Laura, 27 from Chicago. Go, Cubs, go. Hey. So I am looking for some career advice today. Oh, oh, well, you've come to the right place. I'm so glad. I need it desperately. So right. I am just now starting to apply for jobs again All after right. leaving a really great position and career path during the pandemic so that I could help my family with some health challenges. All right. Um, so I've been feeling really overwhelmed lately, just trying to decide what to do next. Okay. I know that you guys have all done a lot of different things professionally. Right. So I'm wondering what advice you might have for someone transitioning to a new career path and how to feel confident doing so. Wow. Wow. This is a good question. Can I can I ask a little bit more about the career? Absolutely. What's giving you anxiety about it? Is it because it's a step up? Is it because it's it's demanding? What? So I think I'm going from something where I felt really confident in my mm. path forward. I got my bachelor's and then my master's degree. Thought I was going to be doing one thing for a really long time. Sure. And it just would be too demanding given the personal challenges right now. Yeah. Um, so I think I am feeling like... It might not necessarily be a step down, but I'm making lateral moves mm. where I might just have to transition to a different career. Got it. Um, and it's just the first time I'm doing that. So, so are you excited of, about this job or not? Well, I don't know, because I have about, you know, 100 tabs open on my computer looking mm. at different um, job applications that I could do. So it's more just trying to figure out... Um, what I want going forward because oh. it's the first time that I've kind of had all those options open. All right, this is this is really real. Jerma, you've met, you're a man who's worn many hats in your life. A few. A few I hats. feel like you might have some good advice for this young lady. I mean, honestly, the best thing I could say is always have at least three things that you care about. So mm. doing any one of those things is fulfilling. Yeah. So whether it's Oh, I'd like to be uh, a, a writer. I'd like to be a veterinarian. Or I always have three interests that you can always do, mm. and you will always be fulfilled, even if the other two don't work out. There always you go. try to have a few. Have some fallbacks, Cody. Thank you. Um, if your if your if your job you were just at was too demanding, uh, what kind of job do you want? That's less like what are you looking for work week wise? Well, ideally, right now, I'm hoping for something that would either be remote or hybrid, just to help with what's going on at home. Mm. But I think eventually I'm looking to move back forward in my career, move up again. And so I am hoping for something that has some upward momentum. Hmm. I see. Um, I mean, I think it depends a lot on the career path you want to go to. If you just want to make a lot of money, if you want to just, you know, quit and become a streamer and play video games all day. Oh, yeah. That's what I did. If you want to start a Fansly, it's a great option. If you just want, you know, if you want easy work or hard work. Yeah. Gotcha. Don't quit your job and play video games. That's, <laughs> that, don't do that. Um, listen, I, I, I can tell you got a lot going on in this question. Because it sounds like you're, you're not just thinking about what job works for you. You're thinking about what job works for the people around you, too. Because yeah. it sounds like you're putting a lot on your plate. And I think what ultimately is going to fulfill you the most is what makes you happy. And I think you're considering a lot of other people's feelings. But I'm going to tell you this. Your family, they love you. And they're going to want to see you happy. And your family is more flexible than you think. They're gonna make things work, right? So whatever career is the one that makes you happy is the one that's gonna make them happy too. 
and you might have to give and take and, 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 and you know, make some, make some changes or some, make some things more flexible, but your family is going to support you through that because you've supported them. So that's the best thing I can say. Obviously, sometimes reality doesn't match up with what you want to do, but I'm telling you, find the one that fulfills you. All right? And make sure there's a few of them. Make sure there's a few of them. And make sure there's a few of them. That's right. Always have the veterinarian in your back pocket. That's true. (laughs) All right. Hey, I still got that. I still got that. Yeah. This, whole, this whole streaming thing doesn't work out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a veterinarian. Oh, he's God gonna be, he's gonna be fixing giraffe ankles before you can blink. I I would trust him with my pet. Quit my job to play video games. So. There you go. Well, anyway, you sound like an absolute angel. I hope I've helped you, and and I wish you the best, my dear. Thank you guys. This was so helpful. Really uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Quit your job and play video games. That's what I do. That's what I did. <laughs> what are you doing? What do you mean? Well, quit your job and play video games. Do you think that's bad advice? Yeah. Well, you keep the job, you play the video games, and if the video games turns out all right, then you quit the job. You're telling me Mm. that if I quit my job to play video games, that maybe I won't be successful? Uh, Yeah. Well, uh... There's a chance of that? I've seen you play video games. (laughs) (laughs) What, What? What's your ELO in League of Legends again? How many hours have you put in that it's game? It's probably higher than mine. I'm, I'm dead serious. I don't think so. Oh, no, it absolutely is. No, I, I don't believe it is. I don't think it is either. All right, let's go ahead. And... I, is there a free rotation in League of Legends? Because I have, I, I've never, I've opened it more maybe one time. I've played for thousands of hours for the last seven years. Yeah, it's going well. Listen, <laughs> let's move on from video games and get right into our celebrity horoscope. Here's a graphic. Oh, that's a good graphic. <laughs> Listen, this is your horoscope. Have you ever had your, your astrology? This is my horoscope. This is your horoscope. Okay, I'm ready? ready to hear it. You're about to learn a lot about yourself, baby. I hope I don't get hit by a bus in like an hour. No. Okay. It's not on here. It's not on there? It's not All on right. here. You're safe. <laughs> good. You can just cross the road without looking. All right, that sounds good to me. All right, your birthday is September 22nd. That's correct. It's coming up soon. Yeah, it's also Hobbit Day. Hobbit yeah, Day. Yeah, I'm gonna get in front of that one. I'm gonna get in front of that one. What is like, that? is it is that like Burger Day? Do people eat hobbits on that day? No, or? it's like the it's like the Lord of the Rings Hobbit Celebration Day. Uh, oh. Miss Kiff Day. Oh, there you go. Yo, yeah. Wow, shots fired. Miss Kiff's <laughs> catching strays, which means you are a Virgo on the cusp of a Libra. Okay. Yep. You have a Virgo sun and a Capricorn moon. Mm-hmm. Makes you very grounded. I don't know. That doesn't sound uh, like you. That doesn't sound like me. You're a head up in the clouds type of guy. I, 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 I sometimes walk around with both shoes untied for yeah, hours maybe, at a time. I don't even care. Maybe you're like grounded from electricity or something. Yeah. You wear a lot of rubber. Yeah, I mean. Oh, these, look at the. These, yeah, the these, are, these are pretty rubbery. All right, this one sounds like you, though. Your negotiating power is high today. Ooh. So it is time uh, for you to, to make a great deal for yourself. Could I have $100 right now? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Do not ask me for a hundred dollars. Give him a hundred dollars. I like a hundred dollars. That's negotiation wallet, power. Kitty. I just got negotiation kitty, power. Kitty, I need to borrow a hundred bucks. I can't do this again. Kitty, give him a hundred dollars. I can't do this again. Give him a hundred. I'll pay you back. Can you write a check? Give him a hundred dollars. I'll Venmo you. I'll Venmo you. All right. Hey, look at that negotiator. I'm a negotiator. All right. Be careful when you are dealing with big personalities right now. Is what it says. Oh, should I are leave you dealing this with anyone with a big personality? <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't be in the studio. I should have not showed up today. All right. Pay attention to the thoughts and dreams that pop into your head. Oh, this is interesting because you told me earlier, after you have a, a large dream, you have a headache all day. That's right, yeah. And you, did you have a large dream last night or was that Austin's show? I, we both had a bunch of big weird dreams last night. Ooh, spooky. Ooh. Yeah, because so, uh, no, uh, two nights ago. So I woke up. Uh, I was walking around, and this actually, this is crazy. It, it says right here, those dreams could cause you physical discomfort. They did, they actually did. They were, they were like five uh, like Slytherin employees that were all standing in, a, in my bedroom. The bed wasn't there. And they were all just standing, staring. They were all like Slytherin employees. And they were all just looking at the wall with like long white hair. And I was like creaking into the room and it freaked me out. So my girlfriend, so I, I, was, I was sitting there doing a dog dream, apparently. I was sitting there going like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it was it was fucking crazy. So and 
the, uh, can I swear? You can quit. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Making sure I can swear on television. So she had to wake me up like four times. I kept going out and coming out and coming in and coming out and everything. It, it was, I was terrifying. Whoa. Yeah, and then at one point I, I was asleep again and I was across the house and she had woken me up three different times from these Slytherin employees. And I was- Now in... you keep saying employees. Yeah. Are they students in the house Slytherin? No. Or are they people who work as like a janitor and a cook no, within the Slytherin universe? Think these were 100% not students. They, okay, they, so they, they graduated they were... and they've become employees somewhere. Very possible. All right. Yeah. But so, they still identify as Slytherins. It's like frat boys. Yeah. Sigma, right, yeah, beta, yeah. theta all sure. day long. They were all standing like this. Just like staring Very at Very rigid. Children of the core. Yeah, it was exactly. All right. So eventually I was in the other room in my dream. And I, and cause, cause my girlfriend woke me up three or four times in a row. And I'm sitting there going, oh, I'm, I'm in the dream again. Oh no, I'm not in the bedroom. I won't be able to hear her when she tries to wake me up again. Whoa. Yeah, it was wild. And I woke up with a headache. You know, Cutie Cinderella is very good at interpreting dreams. What do you think that dream means? What does that mean? Um, was there anything besides people? No, oh, the bed was missing. The bed was missing. Well, I, I have a bed missing. in the bedroom. Bedroom was gone. It was, it was just. What does it mean, gone. Cutie? Um, when you're missing a bed in a dream, it actually means that you feel like you are missing comfort in your life. Whoa! What's it say on that thing? Don't worry about that. We're on to this. Um, also, something very interesting. September 22nd, I know this, is actually Tom Felton's birthday. Who, who's Tom Felton? Tom that? Felton played Draco Malfoy. Whoa! In the Harry Potter series, Harry Potter. It's getting too real in here. That's weird. All right, that's weird. It's Why? getting too real. Why were there so many Slytherin employees know. in my dream? And he was a Slytherin, and he shares your same birthday, and I'm just saying there could be something there. The Tom Felton. Everybody knows him except for me. Um, but missing missing a bed reveals that you're concerned of not being up to the task and not succeeding. Whoa! Oh, so shoot. maybe are you having a little imposter syndrome? Uh, not I don't know. Am I? Maybe you want I don't to be know. I don't know. I'm not asking you. What does the sun say? Good morning. Can we ask? <laughs> Good morning. We're gonna take our next call. <laughs> that was some says. spooky stuff. That was scary. Yeah. That's weird it's all stuff. Tom Felton. Tom Felton's birthday. Whoa. I was his number one fan. I had a poster. I would kiss it every day. Whoa. Should I tweet at him? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be like, hey, dude. Like, he doesn't a, have anything going on anymore. A bunch were of you going, in my house last night? Hey, were, you, <laughs> were you in my house with a bunch of you employees? Know, my favorite pickup line I ever got on Tinder because I had a bio that said something about liking Harry Potter, they said, hey, why don't I come slither in bed with you? Was this Ludwig? Was this how he plays the gap? Yeah, Ludwig, you can slither on in. Hmm. All right, we're gonna take our next call. That got weird. This person's been sitting here going like, can they take my call? Like, what are they talking about? Hello, you got Donna, and we're here to help. Uh, my name is uh, Tyler, I'm from Missouri. Okay, Tyler uh, from Missouri. Uh, I, for the past few months, I stopped dating uh, because I was using all those dating apps yeah. and uh, they kind of toxic for me. I, I had a bad look on, on dating, so I stopped to refresh. Uh, but now I think I'm ready to get back out there. Mm. Uh, but I don't really know how to go out, enter the dating scene uh, right. without using dating apps because of the pandemic and everything, like over the last few years, it was just really hard. So uh, yeah. I don't want to use those dating apps, but I don't really know how to get up. It sounds like Skylar has, it sounds like you had a bad experience on those dating apps. Anything happen? Um, I just had, I, I went on a lot of dates. They were not very good dates, never really uh, amounted to anything, which isn't necessarily bad, but right. some of them were, were fairly negative experiences and I think it just kind of made my outlook on dating uh, not very good. Sure. So I want to kind of reset and assess my outlook on it. So you're asking and, how uh, to get back into the dating world, huh? Yeah, without using, like, dating apps. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cutie. So what you're going to do is you're at a bar. Okay. And you're going to go up to someone All and right. you're going to say, hey... I'm a seeker. Are you my golden snitch? <laughs> what the hell does that mean? 
from Harry Potter. It's a callback to it. We were just talking about Harry Potter. So oh! Harry Potter, Golden Star. Oh, I, oh. I, I thought you were saying he was going to stab her. No, 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 no. He's snitch. like, you must be a bludger because you knock me out. What the hell is a bludger? Well, it's a guy. That it's sounds like a racial quitted. slur. Well, <laughs> I hope it's not. I, I hope so too. We'd not. be off the air pretty fast. <laughs> It'd be bad. So bad. Um, Do you read Harry Potter? I've never read this shit. You know, I've never read Harry Potter. All right. I've only seen the movies. Okay. But I will say the dating apps are tricky because a lot of times when you scroll into the dating apps, I, I was there uh, years ago and I, I'm kind of a slug person. And I remember just scrolling through like Tinder and, and Hinge and Bumble and all these places. And it was just everybody was outside, mm. like on rocks. Ah! And it's just like I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to go out on rocks. If I like swipe on you, that means like, oh wow, that's cool. I can't wait to go like walk around on rocks. Yeah. I just don't, I don't. Now care. that you mention it, there are a lot of photos of people on rocks. Out on, on rocks. Yes. Yeah. Standing on a rock. And with fish. Yeah, and holding a fish too. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 tricky. Uh, I I wish there was better advice to give, but honestly, I mean. If, the, the way that I've met pretty much everybody that I've ever really ever had a relationship with was going out with friends and like friends of friends. Being, yeah. Every, pe- no, people knowing that, oh, you're single. Yeah. Oh, th- I'm single too. Oh, this person's single, right? It's, it's tricky because those dating apps can just become such crazy places. I, I, I've seen people just sit there and go like, swipe, 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 yeah. swipe, 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 swipe. You don't even know who you're doing it to. And it's just like, whoa, what's happening here? So it's just, I, 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 don't, I don't like the swipe culture. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the swipe culture. Not a big swiper. No, I'm not. I'm not a fan of it. Okay. I, th- I think people swipe too much. But too much swiping. It's far too much. Far too much swiping. I agree. I agree with that too. Listen, here's what I'm going to tell you about getting back into the dating world. All right? I think it's interesting, right? A lot of times people think the best place to go to meet people is a bar or somewhere where people are, you know, getting wasted or going out to meet singles. I would say for someone like yourself, who sounds like they're a little kind of insecure about getting back into the dating world, I would tell you to go do stuff you like, right? And and, and try and meet people there, right? Because if you're doing something you're interested in, you're going to be passionate about it. You're going to find someone with the same passion and you can immediately start up a conversation, right? Because at a bar, you got to kind of break that barrier of like, hey, I'm talking to you because I want a bone. You know, that's a weird place to start from. (laughs) Yeah. Try to start up a conversation from, hey, let me give you some poison that will inebriate you, and maybe we can make a mistake later together. Uh, I think you got to dial it back. Go do something you like. What's something you like? What's one of your passions, Skylar? Uh, movies. Movies. It's hard to talk to someone in a fucking movie, Skylar. Give me another one here, all right? Don't be that asshole talking in a movie. Can, can What's another passion? Or... Help me, Skylar. It's, it, uh, that's very, it was very, very violent. What? Because that was a loud scream. Yeah. Um, another passion. I, I like, I, I think, like, model making is another thing that I really like. Oh, God, Skylar, you killed <laughs> Wait, hold on. What, <laughs> what about, like, volleyball? What kind of model making? Like, ships, uh, in, a, in, a, ships in a bottle? Gun. Way worse. Way worse? It's Warhammer, isn't it? It's Warhammer. No, it's Gundam. Gundam! People are into Gundam. There's tons of people into Gundam. Like Gundam. That's the have, that's a good answer. I have a good idea. I have a good idea. Okay, I she's a, got a good idea. There's this YouTuber that I know that uh, well, I don't know him. I'm just a fan. Uh, him and Tom Felton. Um, it's called Stutson Studio, and he makes little models on YouTube, and he has a Patreon. You join join his Patreon. You join his Discord. You meet someone in the Discord, and you fall in love, and you get on calls, and you say, "This is my Discord kitten." And every love girl, they they love being called a Discord kitten. That is a great idea. Don't use a dating app. Turn another app into a dating app. <laughs> a secondary app. Yes. This is a great idea. Cutie Cinderella and completely. And you would have a commonality yourself. of liking, maybe, I don't even know if Stutzen Studio has not Listen, there are also model stores. There are also some other places. I'm sure you have some other interests that don't involve you being silent in your own house. Um, you know, maybe go explore some of those, but 
I wish you the best, my friend. Also, can we turn the music down? Yeah, the music bars? is booming. I, I'm so sick of that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm too a little, loud. It's just like, okay, here's this. We're going to get, they do it in bars. They do it in restaurants. They do it everywhere. Yeah, like, we, we, we really is, jack it up. You just can't even talk. You do the thing yeah. where you vacuum clean or talk over people. Yeah, so they, oh, yeah, so uh, blah, 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 in their ear. It's just turn the, uh, turn the music down. And at Buffalo Wild Wings. So yeah. loud there. It just, it, it just turn it down by like 50%. I'm the music also is screaming. fine. I also scream a lot. I'm sorry. Oh, he said at bars. Oh, no, I'm talking about like a bar. Yeah. Well, oh, Skyler's still on the line. Sorry, Skyler. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad at Skyler? No! He's gonna do fine! I mean, Gundam models, that's He's actually... gonna build a heavy arms Gundam at, at uh, Love and Thunder, and some woman is just gonna yeah. rush into his arms. He could always just start streaming and fall in love with one of his mods. Oh, that's I bet you there's a advice. ton of people out there that, all, like, the Gundam scene... Uh, the, that, that's not... That, that, well, that's nothing wrong with that. That was an interest, interesting I hobby. would be willing to bet that it's overwhelmingly male. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, wild guess. <laughs> Do we have time for one more call before break? All right, never, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to break. But you got to <laughs> stick around because we're giving out advice. We'll help you better than we did Skylar, we promise. And free t-shirts. What? We don't have the budget for that. Go to ad, go to ad, go to ad. Jack, can I get one? No, there's no t-shirts. Oh, okay. I, like, I, could, I would like one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're back here with me, Donna. Hey, Donna is the name of the show. And man, oh man, have we been giving out some advice. We've been giving out advice. It's not great. It's not our best, but it's advice. All right, it's there. All right. Listen, first thing we're going to talk about, if you want to be a caller on the show, which I know you do, we got a new website. Here, let's pull that up. Let's show my, oh, no, that's the number. Wait, that's the website. 833-HeyDonna.com. It's the same as the number. Did we put it? Why did we put an 833 in front of it again? <laughs> Who is this other Donna? And why is she stealing all my stuff? Anyway, you got to get on the website if you want to be a caller. You got to use the website. The phone number is mostly for voicemails. We take those two. But if you want to be a live caller in the show, putting out your name, Getting your, getting your problems solved. You got to get on that website right there. It's in the chat. Click it. Do what it tells you to do. 
All right, we're back on the show. How you feeling, Jeremy? How you feel about the show? I feel great. Ready to do some more advice. Now you've done two shows today. Yeah. What's the better show? Uh, I, I, I will. This guy Don't think too much. Go ahead and just answer. I have Off the top of your head. Four and seven, 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 something like that. I think that answers the question pretty well. Hmm. Yeah. All right, Cutie, how you feeling about the show? I feel good. And what's your favorite show? Oh, I Not you too, Girl. you bitch. What? <laughs> uh, say, hey, Donna! Someone say, hey, Donna is their favorite show. Girl. Hey, Donna is the program that you should be watching at this very moment right now. Thank you. There you go. There you go. And now your turn. Gossip your favorite Girl. show is? Gossip Girl. <laughs> Gossip Girl. Have you watched it? With the own people. Was it on? Uh... Netflix. It's old. It's old, old, like... Wait, origi- like it's in a Netflix original series? No. No, it's like, it used to be on CBS oh. when I was in high school. Yeah. Didn't the Gossip Girl turn out to be a man? Yep. There you go. I spoiled it for all of you. Watch my show, not that show. <laughs> That's what's what you your, get. What's your favorite movie of all time, Donna? My favorite movie of all time? Big fan of Titanic. Oh, okay. Makes Titanic. Sense. Yeah, I get mad at the end though because I'm I'm more petite than she was, so I would have put Jack on the table with me. <laughs> That's right. A slim girl like me, he would have lived. He wouldn't have wanted. Don't to. say anything. Don't you say it. I see your eyes. He would have lived. Right? Plenty of room on that door. Plenty of room on that door. That's right. I've never even seen that movie. You never even seen Titanic. No, because I like know the whole movie. What do you mean you know the whole movie? I you know, know the whole entire movie. You know movie. a ship sank. What else do you know? I know everything. I don't need to see it. Tell me one thing that happened. Okay, they play music while the ship's going down. Oh, they play music. And one goes, ah, gentlemen, it's oh, my pleasure to play music no with movie you. movie ever. Have they ever played music? Hold well, the phone. With the what? ship. Uh, but I, uh, yeah. Don't uh, help him. Uh, but I, I feel like I've seen the movie a thousand times. Oh, give me another thing that happened. Okay, um, this thing, the T-pose. Right, uh, that's one thing. You're right. right. Romantic. And then You're he, missing he, the magic. But I, I, it's, I, I never, I don't, I, what, do I need to really, do I really need to see it? What's yeah. your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time, uh, Gremlins 2. What a choice. Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2, the new batch. Favorite movie of all time. Gremlins always remind me of Donna when she doesn't shave. Oh, okay. Yeah, it reminds me too, because you're always getting fed after midnight. Listen. <laughs> it's a great film. Is it? Yeah, the, the best part of that entire movie is, okay, not spoilers for everybody that's not, not seeing Gremlins 2, which, by the way, go see it. Go watch it literally right now. Right. Not in the theater. Well, after this show. After this show. It, it is one of the first movies to feature interspecies erotica. It, I, it, oh. <laughs> a man has accurate. sex with a gremlin. Oh, my God. I, is that yeah. why you enjoy that's it? That's accurate. But, well, not, that's not accurate why I like it. Oh. Uh, there's a part in the movie where, where the movie stops. Yeah. And it goes to inside of a movie theater watching Gremlins 2. And the gremlins have ruined the movie in the projector room. Right. Yeah, yep. And and they get... Hulk Hogan is in his wrestling outfit in the theater. All right. And one of the ushers comes over to Hulk Hogan. He's like, Hulk Hogan, I'm sorry. I'll bother you while you're watching gremlins too. But uh, you've got to deal with these gremlins back here in the projector room. And he looks into the camera and he's like, let me tell you something. You gremlins are ruining this movie. He goes on a whole routine, like a, like a wrestling promo. It's the best part of the whole movie. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I don't know if you know this. This is not an ad. Uh... Gizmo's being added to multiverses today. Yeah. Woo. That's a good one. I love me some Gremlins. I'm a gre- Do you like Gremlins? Gremlins 2 is way better than Gremlins 1. And now I you're talking shit. I will fight anyone that's... Now you're talking Gremlins. shit. Gremlins 1 was a kind of drama thriller. Gremlins 2 is a funny comedy. It's a comedy movie. We're going to say our next caller, because I, I don't even know what to say to you. Ask him what they think about Gremlins 2. Hello, this is Donna. Gremlins 1 better than Gremlins 2. Do you agree? Hey, hey, oh, uh, oh, hey, Donna. Hey, how you doing? Who is this? I'm Jaden. I'm from Ventura County, uh, California. Jaden, so, how you doing? Jaden Smith. I'm it's good. Oh, how about you? I'm doing really well. It's famous. I have a question. You have a question? Well, that you came to the right place. I am a professional artist who does content creation. I um I blend clips showing my personality with art clips such as time lapses. 
All right. Something I found to be highly discouraging to deal with is the lack of return in relation to the amount of work I put in. So like okay. on average, I'm, the center point is my art, which roughly takes about 46 plus hours to make the entire video. Sure. So my question is, as a content creator, how have you found to be the best way to deal with the specific type of discouragement? Mm. So you're not, you're putting in more work than you feel like the art is, is getting uh, recognition. Yeah. All right. Uh, cutie, you don't get enough recognition at all. You put in a ton of work. You never are where you should be. You haven't figured out how to break that glass ceiling. Tell them what you've done to deal with disappointment. I, um, you know, I've just accepted that maybe I'll never break the glass ceiling. So I'll just, I'll just clean it. I'll just sit on the cusp and just Great shine advice. it for someone else. Sometimes, you know, we're not all of us are meant to live our dreams. Ooh. <laughs> that was, that got really real there for a second. Hey, Gemma, you're someone who's wildly successful. Could you put yourself in the mind of someone like Judy Cinderella and tell her, I'm gonna put a little bit more of a positive spin on this one. Yeah. Uh, so, whenever you make anything, you always want to make sure, like, forget about forget about trying to be uh, recognized or relevant, whatever. What your your goal should be to always try to make the best thing that you possibly can make. Uh. And then eventually, right? Eventually, if you ever do break that ceiling, if you ever do get out there and, you, and some of your work gets shown, and you have, oh wait, I actually have some some relevancy or some people or whatever around, and that the, the time, like the effort and the time to what you get back is there. You have a portfolio of stuff. You have a bunch of stuff that's there too that you already did that people will go back and watch and and uh, consume and be like, wow, uh, this is great. This is so awesome. There's a whole catalog of stuff here. You can't go into it with expecting to get any relevancy or anything back. Just always try to have a good portfolio. Yeah. So if it ever does happen, everything is good and everything has your effort in it. Damn, that's good advice. Listen, let me first say, Cutie is an amazing creator. I'm, I'm busting her balls, but everything she does is incredible. And beyond that, let me just say, we live in a weird era. We live in a weird era where art is quantified and it's, and it's measured by how many people put eyes on it, not how good it is, right? Some of the best things I've ever seen only have a few views, but we immediately equate the number of eyes on something with how good it is which is the farthest thing from the truth, right? You know how many people watch Morbius? That movie sucked, <laughs> right? That doesn't mean it's good just because people were morbing out on a fucking meme, all right? But that's, that's the era we live in, right? We live in the social media era where, where everyone equates, oh, there's a lot of eyes on this, so it must be wonderful. It must be the new thing. It's gonna be hard to, to balance your art with exposure. Right, because the, the key to succeeding as a social media creator right now is volume. The spice must flow. You just make a bunch of crap and at least, you know, something's gonna hit, right? So as someone doing what you're doing with, where it takes an enormous amount of, of work to produce what you're producing, uh, you don't get that same kind of return on it. What I would say is this though, you can repurpose your art, right? Take your art and put it everywhere. If you don't have your art on TikTok and on YouTube and on Instagram and hell, put it on Facebook, even though I, I think only, you know, people in homes are on Facebook anymore. Put it everywhere. Repurpose it as many times as you can. That way you can get the maximum volume out of your art. The spice must flow. But again, don't ever equate views with the quality of what you're making. Yeah, and also when you're paying attention to what other people are doing, I know it's, it's, it's incredibly difficult. It really is to look at other people's success and other people doing well, doing great in your same genre, your same field, it's so hard to block out that noise of, you're doing so well and I wanna do that too. I wanna do it so bad. Use that as firepower, use that for yourself. Yeah. To want to make stuff that's always good, that's always worth putting your name on. Right. It's, it's so hard though to look at everything and be like, mm, you have so many people watching you or so many people watching your art or consuming your art and I want it so bad, use it. Use yeah. that as firepower for yourself. Yeah. I don't know, like, sorry, I, I don't want to cut off anybody. I just like, I'll look at TikTok mm. and you'll, I'll see some of the dumbest things that oh, yeah. ever thought possible. Right. 
But there are a lot of different audiences. Likes. <laughs> yeah, they, but there are a lot of different audiences, right? The audience that you might, when you think about those TikTok videos that you're watching and thinking about, that's a completely different audience that might be even in the same genre of the content that you're making. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's different worlds that they might not even be connected at all. Um, so that's that's the tricky part is trying to not look at this other genre, this other group of of people making content that may not ever care about your genre or what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say this: TikTok is so base, right? It's hard to to execute high art in like ten seconds. It really is. So mm -hmm. you know, if if your goal is a bunch of views then dumb it down, right? Even uh, Jay-Z had to bring down his lyrics before he really hit it. So, you know, if your goal is mass exposure, just hit yourself in the head a little bit. Make, you, make you your shit a little dumber, right? Make it, make it a little quicker, make it a little dumber. But if your goal is being a high artist and, and making great art, don't worry about the views. Anyway, you've had enough time. You gotta go work on your art. Get out of here, goodbye. We helped that person. I think I believe so. Oh, I believe I think so. so. I think so. I, I think did. so. Mm -hmm. We got time for one more call before it ends. We got time for one more though. Let's do one more. Let's get one more in here. Oh, there it is. Hello, you got hey Donna. I'm giving out some good advice. Hi Donna. Uh, my name is Jennifer. I'm 26, and I'm Hi, from Jennifer. Atlanta. Jennifer. Hi. Okay. From the uh, ATL. My <laughs> uh, my question is um, my last relationships have ended kind of the same way mm. um, and not of my own volition it always feels like the guys just give up on me and start talking to someone else Jesus and it's Christ happened, Jennifer yeah it's happened a few times now and it's just getting to the point where I'm not sure if I'm going to open myself up for another relationship because if I'm putting all this emotional energy into these guys that just don't even care. So you telling me how long you've been dating these guys before they just start talking to someone else? Uh, the last one I dated for ten months, and he had just ten? met my mother. Oh my! And then he just started talking to someone else. Yeah, I found out two months later when I called him out and he admitted he had started a relationship with someone else. No! How did you find out? Oof. They were flirting on Twitter. No! Right out there in the open? I hate when that happens. He was using the same lines on her that he was using on me. No! What? What lines? He was joking that his fitness app doesn't track sex. Oh my, oh my God! God oh, in I heaven, knew Jennifer. that it that something was going on. Jennifer, can I ask a question? Do you have like a type in men? Do you like bad boys? Do you like assholes? Is that what's going on, or is this like? I didn't think I liked douchebags, but uh, it does seem that way. I mean, I listen. I, let me just say, if he's using a fitness app line on you, he's a douchebag. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did that? Did he? When did he use that line on you? And did it work? I mean, yes, but it was the pandemic. It was a weird time to be Oh, yeah, the, the beggars couldn't be choosers during the pandemic. I, I was looking for any old scratching post when I was locked inside. Anybody who passed the PCR was good enough for me. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, how many times has this happened, Jennifer? Like three or four now. Three or four? Do you? Th okay, here's what I'm going to say. This must be a type of guy that you're attracted to. I, I don't know what to I, say. Uh, I don't I don't know. Where are you meeting these guys? Yeah, where do you meeting these guys? Through friends or like through work. They're not like direct coworkers, but they're like friends you, of coworkers or something. What's, what's to the timeline too? To three, three or four in timeline? No, over many years. Oh, many years. Okay. I, that's the thing. It happens and then I don't feel comfortable dating again. And yeah. so I take some time for myself, and I try again, and it just keeps happening. Have you thought of going to more Gundam conventions? Yeah. <laughs> we got a guy building Gundam models who I would be happy to meet What do you, you think about him? He's single? Yeah. Oh, big time. Trust me. Yeah. Do you like movies? Um, uh, I mean, I like movies. I don't know what Gundams are, though. Well, that's perfect. How much time do you have? Je Jennifer, let me, let me, <laughs> let me tell, start with this, all right? It's, it's okay that you don't feel comfortable putting yourself back out there. Because obviously when someone does this, it's such a violation of trust. 
right? To end a relationship like that, it's so slimy, right? If, if you're out of a relationship, just tell someone. The fact that they're like prematurely moving on, this is, this is awful. And I don't know if you've just had a, a horrible run of bad luck or if you are just attracted to the worst men on the planet, um, but it's not your fault. And I think, you know, give yourself some time to heal because if, if, you, if you put yourself back out there before you are ready, you might end up with another piece of shit who's using fitness tracking lines on Twitter. These are awful. Yeah. Um, you got to make sure that you, have, you are fully healed, you fully recovered, and the dating world is going to be there. But right? I think a lot of people put this pressure out on themselves. Oh, I got to get right back out there uh, to win the breakup or to make sure that I'm still X, Y, and Z and that blah, 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 blah. Give yourself time, my dear, because you're not going to find a quality partner until you are healed from this situation. The faster you put yourself out there, and if you haven't healed, you might find yourself in a bad situation because you're forcing yourself to, 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 to find love or to find passion or to find a relationship with it where there isn't that connection. And that might lo- lead to someone losing interest, right? If you base an int- uh, a relationship off of uh, immediate passion or a hookup, it doesn't have the longevity to make it a long way. So what I think is the pattern that you've established is you're putting yourself back into the dating world before you should be, and that leads to dating inferior quality men, and you base this relationship on, on, on trysts, and so it doesn't have the staying power. I think that is the issue. Not you, but just the fact that you're not ready to be back in the dating world. German, do you have anything to say? I, that was sage-level advice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> hey, Donna. Yeah, that, that was some absolute sage level advice. I don't even know if I could add to that. That was that was I, that was perfectly said. Jennifer, are you feeling a little better, my dear? I am. I I think I needed to be told that it wasn't me. Good. So here's what you're gonna do. You're not gonna worry about your dating life. You're gonna go out there and eat, pray, love it. All right. Mm-hmm. You're gonna spend some you time, and when you feel like you got your groove back, that's when you go look for some for, for some new dong. All right. Yeah. And they, they have to look for, they should yeah. use Harry Potter pickup lines. No, th- that's a red flag right there. Slytherin employees. No, n- not Slytherin employees either, all right? <laughs> Just look for a good quality guy that can hold a goddamn conversation. No more dating, right. no more workout at pickup lines. That's awful. That's <laughs> the biggest red flag I've ever heard. Harry Potter ones. That's like cutting leather or, or hurting animals when they were teens. That's bad stuff, all right? All right, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Talk to you later. Holy smokes. All right, we're going to go to our our next ad, but make sure you stick around. We're helping more people when we come back with Hey Donna. You get more of me, you get more cutie, and get more Gemma. All right, stick around.
right, we're back. Oh, it's so good to be back. Guys, what a wonderful show we've had already, but we are now going to play one of our new games with our guest, Germa. Cutie Cinderella, what's the game? Hey, guys, welcome over to what we like to call Cutie Time. Yay, Woo! Cutie Time! Cutie Otherwise time. Cutie time. Cutie time. known time. as QT. Get it? Cutie Time. I don't get it. Oh. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? QT Time. QT. Cutie Time. Yes! I understood it. I understand it. I got it. What the hell is she talking about? You having a stroke? It's letters. It's just letters. <laughs> like quality time? Beauty time. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, today we're playing a game that I put together called Who's This Tweet About? Oh! Who's This Tweet About? Who's This Tweet About? Is All right. it a reply to Germa985? All right. Or sure. is it a reply to super galactic porn star Mia Malkova? Oh, so we have to guess whether this tweet was made at you or at the amazing porn star Mia Malkova. I feel like this is going to be hard. <laughs> I... Oh, it's going to be hard, all right. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh, easy. Hey, now. Um, I'll bring up I'll bring up the first one all right. for us to guess about. Um, we will not use names, but this was someone we know. It was Donna. Donna said, oh. on May 28th, 2020, <gasps> that fat, juicy ass... Now, Jeremy, do, do you have a fat, ju juicy ass? I, I mean, I, it's, yeah. Because I, Mia I, has what we call, in from a medical perspective, a very fat, juicy mm -hmm. ass. And in Texas, we call it a badonka donk. Yes, that's right. I, I ate a lot of McDonald's and hamburgers and shit when I was younger. And I think it just, it all went somewhere. It went somewhere very, very... It went to that ass. Yeah, it did. Mm, all right. It's funny, because I have, like, this little chest, and I got my arms are okay, but, I mean, it's... I have a fairly... You got a grown man's butt. It's very grown, and it's okay. It's all right. It's I'm okay. okay that I have a big... So uh, was this tweet about butt. you or me and Malkova? When was it, 2020? 2020, that fat, juicy ass. Fat spelled with a P-H. P-H. <laughs> Which is the good. Yeah. I'm going to say 2020. I'm going to say this is about me. Wow. All right. What do you think, Donna? Am I missing something? <laughs> I'm going to say Mia Malkova. Really? I mean, I mean, she's famous for that dumper. That's really rude to your guest that you're saying. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sure. Well, you I don't have nice. a, I don't have a world famous dumper. No, you don't. I, I, I it's, it's, I don't. I, it's, it's a, it's a man's ass. Whatever. It's a, yeah, it's a man's right. ass. It's normal. Well, I would like to say, Germa is a. A little full of himself. It is Mia Malkova. Yeah, they, uh, no, but all right. I mean that's all. Oh, to be, I, I got, when did my when did that tweet of me showing my ass in the mirror? What? It's, that tweet I, of me with my ass in the mirror I, was what? Twenty twenty, right? Showing I ass. That one. I. I did go. I, You're it's, a man was, of many talents. You got a dollhouse. You're showing ass. And he was in Guys and Dolls. He was in Guys and Dolls. Thanksgiving twenty twenty. Thanksgiving twenty twenty. I did a, a big turkey ass thing. Where I was, I had what? a big turkey food ass thing. Anybody, can you pull it up somehow? No, we can't do that. I don't have that. <laughs> I, I don't have that skill. I thought that was 2020. Whatever. Moving on. You'll be good. Okay, next. Next tweet S from someone. Says, I wonder if someone has ever shaved their balls to your stream. <laughs> what the? Wow. August 29th. Shave their balls. I know I haven't done that myself, but. What a tweet. Is this a reply to Germa, you got, Germa or you do a lot of. I mean. Do a lot of personal grooming on your stream, or? I have shaved on stream before. You shaved your balls? No, not my balls. Oh, okay. I've shaved my my chin and my 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 mustache. All right. I it could I don't know. I have no idea. Now, do you, gonna... Is there any reason that anybody would tweet this at you? Any rational reason? No. Do you encourage people to do this while you're streaming? No, I don't. I, I, Are I, you sponsored by Manscaped? I got sponsored by Fansly that time. Oh. So I mean, come on, come on. I don't what? know if Fansly has a shaving balls category. No, they don't. I, I'm gonna. You know what? I said I got it wrong last time, but I think I'm gonna get it right. I think this is. I think this is to me. This is to you. I think this is to me. Oh. I believe um, it's to me. You believe this is to you. And I'm gonna be think? the contrarian. I'm gonna go me again. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, this one was in fact for Germa. Wow. Yes. Ball shaving icon. By the way, the answer is the answer is probably yes. 
Whoa. Like, oh. do, uh, do, you, has anyone ever done this to my, probably. There are people that put my stream in their tabs for to do homework and, and you know, I don't know, whatever they're going to do. I, you know, homework is a little bit that different than <laughs> yeah, but I, they're doing something. You away Whatever they're doing, <laughs> they might be doing hobbies. something in the. I know that people have put streams on in the background. Maybe you're doing some personal grooming. They, yeah, they could have your stream on while they're in the shower, or it's while possible. they're sitting at their desk shaving their balls. Guys, what all? We're going into the next round. This is next tiebreaker. one. Okay. This is a reply from August 26th. It says, "How long until someone does what ball fondler predicted?" I mean, I already now, know. Is there I, I know. I know. Now, is there someone in your community named Ball Fondle? <laughs> my stream looks like fucking crazy. My stream looks insane from the outside. Uh, who is this Ball Fondle? This is one hundred percent to me. Now, I, now I you would are put confident. I would put. So a, you must know yes. this Ball Fondle, gentlemen. I would put a thousand dollars. This is to me. Whoa. Who is the Ball Fondle? He sounds like the Hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do I, do I need to explain this? Donna, yeah, should I absolutely. Explain it? Okay. Um, so I did this the base baseball stream where I had the circus versus magicians, and I when I talked about what it was, there was somebody in the community who months before somebody asked, you know, just a, a simple question: What is the baseball stream? What is that? I've never. Oh, you're doing a baseball stream. And this person in the community replied and said, Oh, he's. I mean, this is on television, right? This is going to be airing on television? Yeah, it's going to be on television. You're going to have to bleep literally the entire sentence. All right, get ready. Okay, so here we go. Three, two, one. It's when he's going to shove an entire baseball up his ass on camera. Ooh. The whole thing. So that's what now, they what said. Now, what did Twitch think about when you did that? Uh, they weren't happy about oh, it. So, oh, this happened. <laughs> it, didn't happen, it didn't happen on camera. Oh, it didn't happen right. at all. It didn't happen okay. at all. Let's okay. get that clear. So, I, so that man's name was Ball Fondler. They got banned permanently. Because they kept harping on it. They kept saying it. Wow. So this wasn't a one-time prediction. No. He was really hidden that you were going to suppository yeah. a baseball. And we're talking suppository of baseball. <laughs> wow. The legend wow. of the ball fondler. Well, I don't even need to guess me, Malcova. Yeah. There's, I, there's no way this is to me. As wrong. long as ball fondler isn't your uncle, none of us are concerned. I guess he wins this one. You win this one. This wow. one's a shower tweet. There's no way. That's like, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and Ed Fansley. <laughs> I mean, they added Fansley yeah. also. Yeah, because as Fansley's if they would great. get Fansley to further leverage you and put pressure on you to put a baseball in your ass. Yeah, yeah. You know what's you know? Okay, let's go off on a little tangent here. All right. So, oh, a, a week ago, we talked about financing streams. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, and and just I know you probably can't put this on television. So. We were talking about, oh, trying to find sponsors and trying to find people that would pay for a show. And, oh, it's so hard going back and forth trying to... And somebody said that they would pay $50,000 for a ball that I may have put on my ass. Oh, my... And I'm just sitting there going, go back and forth a thousand times with all these sponsors and, and production teams and... Or what, 10 baseballs? Yeah, that'd be... Oh, yeah. That's it? Oh, and you got money for uh, however long? Oh, my gosh. That's ridiculous to think about that. It's ridiculous to think so about So how many that. baseballs did you sell? Zero. No, okay. All right. Mistake number one. Next tweet. Oh, we got more. Oh, shoot. Yep. This one says, I've never wanted to be a floorboard more in my life than right now. Now, do you have a history with floorboards? <laughs> have you ever sat on the floor? You done anything on the floor we should know about? I don't, I hope, I don't think so. I don't, I, on the floor? There's no way. I, I show like here on camera. I'm, I, I, I usually don't have... Uh... Couldn't have been anything in the dollhouse? Did oh. you do push-ups or anything? You know, it, co it actually could be. Were you doing push-ups wow. on a floorboard? I still don't think so. I think this, I think this is me. All right, I'm going to be a contrary, and I'm going to lock in Germa. All right. Is, in fact, Mia Malkova. Mia Malkova. <laughs> what was that in relation to? <laughs> what was she doing on the floorboard? Sitting on the floor. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, who can blame him? Who can blame him? <laughs> All right. That's it. You uh, won. Did I win? You win. You really know your Twitter. Do I get another big check? You get no, a free no, no. t-shirt. Yeah, you get a t-shirt. I'll take it. Shout out to Ball Fondler. Shout, Shout out, out to Ball Fondler. Ball. What a name. The world famous Ball the Fondler. World, the world famous Ball Fondler. It is world famous. Do we have time for a call or should we go to break? All right, we got one call before we go to break. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Hello, got Donna. 
Oh, I can barely hear you, my dear. Hold on, try again. Okay. There you go. Hi. I'm getting you. Hi. <laughs> All, All right. right, we seem to be talking at the same time. We got you. Okay, we got you. Okay. All right, I got you now. All right. All right, I got Excellent. you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, whatever you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, are we ready to take yeah, the question? Yeah, we're good. Go ahead. Um, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my boyfriend likes to grunt like a gorilla during sex. Oh, God. <laughs> you came in hot. You should have just kept playing telephone tag. Holy shit. All right, Ash, so you, your boyfriend likes to grunt a lot. Is yes, like, like, um, excuse me. <laughs> no, Ash, stop. Stop what you're doing. Please do it one more time, though. One more time. <laughs> All right. I'm getting the visual now, okay? <laughs> um, and this is not just during sex. Oh but no! Any chance he can? Huh? <laughs> what, what do you mean, any chance? Does he do this when he drinks milk? Like this is—is is it like during fellatio, or are we like talking about like when he's washing dishes? Yeah. <laughs> no, to be fair, actually, he's washed enough dishes in his time. He uh, had three siblings. But, oh, okay. Um... <laughs> when the, so, so is the question how to get him to stop grunting? <laughs> She just wants to brag. Yeah. yeah this, is, this is a flex. Ash called the brag. Ash, is the question the how to get him to stop? <laughs> no, honestly, like, we've been together for six years now. All right. Going on six years. We have a little girl together. She's five years old. Okay. I was just wanting to know how to I deal with this, because some days... I see how he grunts and groans, and it's just so funny to do, and it's so impressive how he does it. I mean, the way I do it, it, it doesn't even compare, honestly. I <laughs> Oh, God, Ash, I got to tell you right now, you, you broke the number one rule. You laugh. What? If a man does something and you laugh, it's fair game, right? If he farts <laughs> and you laugh, there's no way he's going to stop, right? <laughs> so the problem is you keep laughing. As long as you laugh... He's gonna keep grunting because no matter what you say, he gets a laugh out of you. It's over. That's true. <laughs> when he does this during sex, are you turned on or off? Turned on. <laughs> no! <laughs> There's no advice. Is there an advice? Just, There's no, no advice. Come on. I just had an epiphany. It all makes sense. What Ash is from say? Florida. I would like to point what that out. I... <laughs> that is What's true. That? You are from Florida, you Ash? Are is from that Florida. true? Florida. That, yes, yes indeed. But is, is it, okay, is it the whole time? The oh, entire only time? Only during, only during climax. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and you very much enjoy this. on national TV right now, oh my God. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ, Ash. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think there is an, it, there's no issue. Here. I don't know why I don't you called, Ash. Yeah, I mean, I, if you enjoy it, I... Uh, I think you got a problem if the kid starts doing it, though, right? <laughs> oh, honestly, my daughter loves monkeys. No! <laughs> okay, listen, you, you gotta... You gotta she okay. is a daddy's girl for sure. Oh, God. All right, all right, so listen. Listen, you, you gotta... Listening. If you wanted to stop, you gotta... If you want to stop, you gotta stop laughing. Because that's gonna okay. open up the door, all right? That's definitely gonna it. open up the door. It's like, hey, listen, I, I, you know, uh, if a man farts around you and you laugh, right, cutie? Do you he, laugh at Ludwig's farts? No, he doesn't fart around me. That's a that's he the says, boldest he, face lie. He that's says, more of a lie than no, the six five. He always says he says boys don't fart. That's what he says. They don't poop either. He told oh me that. God. What is he a <laughs> fucking Kardashian? That's what he says. <laughs> Oh my God. Does he have any habit that makes you laugh, though? Um, yes. All right, what does he do? Oh. He is, so he looks at me and smiles, and then I just laugh. So charming. You are the worst. <laughs> Jeremy, do you do anything that... All right, so, so, hey, so, so me and my girlfriend, we don't, we don't say that we go to the bathroom. What? We, don't, we say, oh, I, I have to disappear. Oh! That's, no, we're not, like, going to take a shit. 
We're not going to, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to fart somewhere. I, I have to disappear. I gotta disappear, I'll be back. Why? Disappear? Wait, why? <laughs> Wait, I, was it, I, I, I'm just, I just, I'll be back in like, I'll be back in like 20 minutes. I got two Kardashians here. What is going on? Okay, I lied. Ludwig shits with the door open. I was what like, in the oh, world? God oh, of yeah. hell! Uh, 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 I'm like a cat. I'm like a cat. I don't want anyone to know that I went to the bathroom. I don't want anyone in like a two mile radius to know I went to the bathroom. That is so interesting. interesting. <laughs> Listen, Ash. is the weird one. No. I mean, there's a lot going on, right? I, I think I need to give my co-hosts help. Listen, I, I don't, this is one of the few times you've stumped Donna. Because I don't know if you even want to stop your current situation. I don't know how to help you, Ash, but maybe get him a little shock collar or something. I don't know, like one of those barking collars. Wait, but hold on, but hold on, wait, but that, wait, but final but question. But sex, it would shock you too. That doesn't work either. But oh. is it, hold on. No, it, that would not. Is it just him doing it? Dory, is it, is it you too? Do you reply? Once or twice. Ash, there's no way I can help you. Ash. I'm sorry. There's nothing to help. <laughs> there's nothing I can do. Yeah, Ash, how do you hear? You're, you're, you're acting like animals. All right. Thank you for your call. We'll talk later. <laughs> I don't, she just it, called the brag. Called yeah, the that brag. was a brag call. That, that was, was a brag. brag. <laughs> that was a great call. That was a wonderful call. She was wonderful. We'll answer, I like that. Commercial. When we come back, I think we got one more round of calls. Thank you for your amazing calls thus far. If you want to call, go on the website. Use the website. I can't wait to talk to each and every one of you. When we come back, more Hey Donna with Germa and Cutie Cinderella. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Start grunting. <laughs> with Hey Donna, and unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. We have one more block with the amazing Germa and my incredible niece, Cutie Cinderella. So we got one more call and some voicemails coming up. Voicemails at the end of the show. Call coming in right now. Hello, you got Hey Donna. Hello, this is Donna. Oh, yeah, this is Donna. Hi, this is Rachel from Texas. Rachel from Texas? Yeah. How you doing, Rachel from Texas? I'm all right, how are you? Well, I'm doing fantastic, I'm on my show. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Um, I had a question for you. All right. So I quit my job. Okay. Um, but they 
are in desperate need of employment and I don't know if I should help them or not or if I should just like call the health inspector. What? Okay, that last bit was a little loaded. Why yeah. would you call the health inspector? Mm, many reasons. The, the first being that there's bugs in the machines that we're like serving food from. Oh, oh my God! What, yeah. re what restaurant is it? <laughs> it's not a restaurant. It's like a arcade bar and like ice cream place. I can't even tell you. Oh God in heaven. And they want you to come back and work there. Well, like they need people and I don't want to come back until they like give me my money. Yeah. But I don't know if they can do that last part without like, like enough, like more employment or Well, anything. I mean, they can't even get rid of the bugs in their machines. So, yeah. So, listen, this is a loaded question. I feel more shook up than the, than the grunting from the last call. What, what exactly do you need to know? Are you asking if you should extort your, your former employee? No, um, no, I feel bad and I don't know if I should like help them find more employees because I feel like they could be a great place. Right? If they just like if they had more management or something. And they and if they if they got the possibly harmful pest infestation out of their food? Yeah, yeah, that too. Um, All right. Have you informed them of these uh, insects or, or health problems? They have to know. Like, at this point, it's just the manager there, and she's got to know. I what mean, do you uh, mean she's got to uh, know? Are they, <laughs> is it that Are they bad? everywhere? They're in, like, the main, um, like, we, make, we sell, like, frozen rosé, and they're in that. Oh! And, like, they're all in the kitchen area. It's pretty hard to miss. Oh, cutie, you, you work a lot with food. Do you have any? I, my, you don't, do you owe these people anything? I'm confused why you wouldn't. Cause if, if you're balancing, you have two options. You call the health code on them and it, it really sucks for the owners or you don't call the health code on them and it sucks for every single patron that goes there. So you're saving the world if you call the health code on them. That's a fair point. Listen, more Rachel, people saved. Rachel, I, you're you're a very young woman, and you got stars in your eyes, and you're trying to do right by your employer, right? You're trying to do right by them by uh, apparently allowing bugs to exist in their food. But let me tell you, you're not helping anyone, right? If you think this can be a great okay. place, what I would do is give them an ultimatum, right? You got to go to your employer, and you got to go. Listen, this is fucking disgusting. You need to do something, and if you are proactive about fixing this situation, about remedying your, your, your noxious work environment, then I will come back and work here. If they do not, then you should definitely report them because they are, they are poisoning people, right? Maybe you will feel better if you give them the option to, to do something, but because it sounds like, they, like you've never directly mentioned it, right? You said they must know. So maybe they don't give them the, the benefit of the doubt, I guess, but but Rachel, this is pretty heinous. I mean, bu bugs in the rosé. I mean, has Good anybody God. has anybody complained? No, it's no. just the employees that know. I nobody seems to notice. Yeah, that is a health uh, hazard, uh, Rachel. I feel like that problem needs to be addressed. I think that the bugs that in the food is yeah, probably priority one. Yeah, we're out here in California where restaurants get shut down for having seed oil in them. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we're yeah. not talking about a, a vegan cross-contamination issue. We're talking about fucking exoskeletons in our liquor. Yeah, I, I thought about, tell, I wanted to tell the owner. He just scares me a lot. And I was- He I scares you? Yeah, you don't want to work there if he scares you. Why the hell are you working in this? Why do you feel like you owe them anything? I don't know. They, they owe me some money. And so I kind of want the rest of the money. How much? Maybe, uh, over 60. Thousand? 
No, just 60 bucks. Oh, they 60 only, bucks. like, right. in my final paycheck. 60 grand. 60 bucks is not worth, yeah. not worth you feeling uncomfortable. That's not worth yeah, it. Yeah, when someone gets dengue fever from the cockroaches in your beverage, I guarantee their hospital bill is going to be more than 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I just want that money, and I don't uh... Yeah. I, I think you probably got to report them. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to tell you. If the bug problem is that bad, maybe tell them. I don't know. I don't know what to do. You know what? You're 18. Give, talk to my mods. Give, have them give them, or give them your Venmo or something. I'll pay you the 60 bucks. <laughs> Report them to the health inspector, all right? Okay. All right, Rachel. Good <laughs> luck and God bless. And for God's sakes, don't drink any of that rosé. I will not. Thank you. All right. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That one scrambled my brains up. That was interesting. That Rose is supposed to be a classy drink. You've done much less for sixty dollars. Oh, that's you, you're right. I'm just so I'm glad I make my own egg salad. I make my own food. You make your own egg salad? Yeah, I just I don't. I, you know, any bugs I, in it? Absolutely not. Absolutely no bugs. Zero. <laughs> Shouldn't be bugs. And if you're scared of your boss, that's never a good sign. Well, she's you know she's eighteen. She's young. I was scared of my boss at eighteen. I was scared of my parents of 18. <laughs> I remember it because it was only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we got our voicemails. Let's bring them up. Hey, Donna, my name is Jamie, and I just wanted to find out how you inf uh, how you fight imposter syndrome. I'm mm. getting my master's in counseling, and I'm about to start counseling people in person, and I'm terrified, and I think I'm going to fail. So I just want to know about how you got so confident. Thanks, Donna. Imposter syndrome. Either you got any good information on imposter syndrome? I would say the the best thing you can do is you have you have to believe that you can do something, right? Yeah. If you if you cannot convince yourself, you've you've lost. Yeah. You need you need to convince yourself first before you convince other people. Yeah. So you have to believe yourself first. And you should believe what you're doing. You should believe yourself first. It's so much e easier to convince other people once you believe yourself. Yeah. I had to Google it. Oh, you don't know what imposter syndrome is? I think I might have it. Yeah. I'm dealing with a lot over here right now. Uh, I think you make a good point, actually, cutie. Ultimately, I think that most people experience imposter syndrome. No matter how prepared you are, no matter how many times you've done what you're doing, I think professionally, especially, everybody experiences imposter syndrome because it's just something we go through, right? Especially in the workplace. It's like we build up our, our, our profession so much and we can't believe that anybody would pay us to do what we do and it, it becomes this self-defeating. I personally haven't had imposter syndrome. And you know, even people like Mike Tyson used to get afraid before fights. One of the greatest fighters of all time. He used to talk about how he was scared out of his mind. I think it's something that just goes with the territory. And it's like Jerma says, you gotta convince yourself. You gotta look that dragon right in the face and you gotta fight it and you gotta deal with it and just know kind of like the, the imagining everybody naked in a room just know everybody's going through the same thing even cutie cinderella yeah you, you got you got to talk yourself up too right yeah. you have to give yourself the confidence to be able to do anything whether it doesn't matter if it's you know like oh streaming or uh, like you mentioned with your work it, it's you have to just be able to say i'm gonna do good today i'm gonna go for it and i'm gonna do because you, obviously you, you're prepared you know what you do. You know you're good at what you do. So do it. Yeah. There you go. I don't listen to other people that are, well, hold on. Let's talk about this for a second. Like, do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know how to do this? You, you have to listen to yourself and you have to believe yourself first. Then you'll, then you'll lie to everybody else. Yeah. Uh, about how, how, how good you are. Right? And if you, if you stay the imposter and no one notices, you win the game. So. There you go. Just be a little sus. Be a yeah, little sus. Convince yourself first. A little sus. All right. One more voicemail. Let's hear it. Hey Donna, my name is Andrew. I'm 36 in Portland, Oregon, and I just got out of the military. Mm. This is the first time in my life that I've been on my own and someone is not telling me what to do. Mm. And I honestly don't know what wow. to do. Yeah. I can't find what I want to do in life. And to be honest, another reason is without the uniform, I'm missing a lot of confidence these days. Mm. And I don't really know how to get past that. Thanks, Donna. Wow. 
Well, you need to find yourself someone like Cutie Cinderella. Get a girlfriend that just, you know, tells you everything to do. Donna, your favorite Broadway show tune is on my own. The, take it away. There's no oh, my favorite it. Broadway show. Yeah. On my own. I can't wait to be on my own. From Lay Miserable, yeah. Oh, no, that was, I was doing a different one. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Lay Miserable. Lay Miserable. Lay Miserable. When she sings it, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> this is, this is a good call. This is a good call. Uh, that's tough, right? When you got someone, it's scary to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a lot easier to have someone to tell you what to do. You know, I think there's, there's a comfort to that because you just do what you're told to do. You don't have to second guess it. You're, okay, I'm blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's tough when you've, when you've fallen into that b uh, behavior for so long. What do you guys think? How, how does one get back to being an independent thinker? First of all, don't worry about the age thing. You yeah. mentioned 36, right? I'm 37. Right. Uh, and I really did not kind of know to listen to myself and do what, to, to know what I was gonna do, where I was gonna be in life until I was at least 28. Mm. 29 at least yeah so don't let how old you are be able to be like oh wow i'm i'm 36 37 38 oh man i'm, I'm so far behind you, you you're not uh you, there's tons of cases of just being able to grow into yourself and well into your 20s well into your 30s so don't mm. worry about that first of all yeah the confidence thing without your um costume What's it called? Uniform. <laughs> Thank you. Without your uniform. Your, your um, military costume. <laughs> like he's a stripper. <laughs> That's the last time I saw anybody wear a costume like yeah. that. So my apologies. Uniform. Without your uniform, losing confidence. You know, that's a tough one. I will say after I quit my, my corporate job and I quit it to play video games every day, I, I lost a lot of confidence because I felt like I was known for being the successful person person that mm. was arbitrarily society's definition of success and now I play video games for a living lol and men want to see my feet uh, like a lot and they would pay me a lot of money for it no big deal um, but oh. I uh, you know it takes a while I've been doing this for a few years and I still don't think I've hit that same level of confidence that I used to have so overall my advice is to say be patient with yourself and if you can sell your feet maybe you should yeah you know, it's interesting that you say that. Wait, what? Sell your feet? Hmm? Oh. Well, the other part was interesting. Well, um, time time limits are, a, a lot of people say like, oh, I, I, be, I better do this before I'm 40. I, be, I better be who I want to be before I'm 30. They, you can't put a time limit on what you're going to do with yourself. Yes. It's impossible. That, that is good advice. I would say as far as the, the, the outfit is concerned, obviously I think the military one has a, a, an immediate... Um, kind of a, a demonstration of import, right? People look at uh, of someone in, in military uh, regalia and they go, oh, that person's military. And, it, and it, it advertises about you very quick and says that you're a serious person. I would say, get yourself a really nice suit. There's something about a man in, in a really dignified suit that immediately you know, indicates, oh, this is a person of import. And if you're looking for that feeling again, get a power suit, dress well. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah. Power suit. As for being told what to do with your life, get a wife. <laughs> right? Get yourself a wife or a husband, whatever you're into. And uh, just, you know, have them boss you around. Right, cutie? I don't do that. Meh. All right. That's it. That's it? We helped so many people. <laughs> yeah, we did. We really helped them. We told the man fair shout of the military to sell those feet. Uh -huh. I'm sure there's a market for... for 10-year military veteran feet. Yeah, there is. That's, those are some tough feet, baby. Yeah. Do you like feet? I accidentally clicked on my tab with Harry Potter pickup lines, and I got a little hot and heavy over here. Oh, you got, you got more you got, than you bargained for. Got yeah. a good one? Oh, so what's he doing with the Nimbus 2000 over there? <laughs> yeah, when I said ACO hottie, I didn't expect it would work. And oh, yeah? That one really got me feeling all sorts of ways. So Sorry about that. Did you two have fun? Oh, good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Chat, did you have fun? I can't, I don't know. What did they say? Did they say yes? I don't know. They I saw a yes. I saw at least two. Well, anyway, first of all, let me say thank you to my co-host, Judy Cinderella. She's wonderful. This is her first time on the show. We will have her back. I'm so excited to have her. She's wonderful. Judy, you got anything coming up? I'm going camping next week with some friends. What the hell does that have to do with this? And it should be fun. 
I just am telling you about my life. I don't know. I'm going camping. Are you, is that going to be like a show? Just camping with some friends, and you can buy merch if you want to. Oh, I'm sure the weather will be beautiful. Is it going to be hot? It's going to be so hot. Yeah, 105 degrees out there in nature. Bunch of pasty <laughs> oh, no. streamers. It's going to go great. It's going to go good. Make sure you have plenty of water. Yeah. Oh. We yep. have... We have this streamer named Will that's coming with us, and they are very thirsty, so we'll bring a ton of All water. right. Thirsty Will. Thirsty. All right, and Jerma, you were a lovely guest. Everybody give it up for Jerma. <laughs> I guess this week. Creative My genius. Pleasure. I call you the Andy Kaufman of Twitch. Do you have anything coming up, sir? Uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. I think Stay it's, tuned. Uh, something maybe in a, in a few months. Oh, Bo, Bo Fondler is <laughs> Bo Fondler frothing. is back, and he's, Bo Fondler he's is ready. Simply frothing, ready to make predictions. Jeremy, thank you so much. You're a wonderful guest. My pleasure. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is episode. Epi this is episode three of Hey Donna. We made it. If you enjoyed the show, please do all the social things that I don't understand. Hit those bells, the subscribes. Tweet about it. Is it tweeting or twatting? Whine about it. <laughs> Twat about it on the internet. Either one do, works. Do what you do. Go to the website, 833 Hey Donna, if you want to be a live caller and you want some of this amazing help. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been Hey Donna, and we'll see you next week. Woo!